World War One, or a time of tanks, explosions, fighting, trench warfare, and pain. But who cares about that? Our story takes place in a seemingly insignificant area of the Mediterranean Sea, the Balkans, or as it was commonly referred to during the time of our story, the Powder Keg of Europe, a term we can thank Otto von Bismarck for. So, let's rewind to 1911. Italy, wanting to expand in the Mediterranean, sent a referendum to the Ottoman Empire on September 28th, telling them to give up their Ottoman land in Libya. The Ottoman Empire refused to give the land to Italy, so the next day, Italy declared war on the Ottomans. This war, known as the Italo-Turkish War, and some Albanian rebels who were doing really well in Ottoman-controlled Albania showed how weak the Ottomans really were. So, let's move over to the Balkans. At this time, the Ottomans occupied a large part of Balkan territory. The only independent Balkan countries were Montenegro, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Greece. Also Romania, but they don't matter until later. All four of these nations had their ethnicities living in the Ottoman Empire, and all four nations wanted to take over territory from the Ottoman Empire to unite their people. So, when the Ottomans' war with the Italians took place, many of the Balkan nations smelled blood. Serbia realized with the Albanian rebels slowly gaining progress in the west that they had to defeat the Ottomans for the territory before they became independent. Bulgaria realized Serbia's fears and tried to set up a military alliance between the two of them, which was heavily encouraged by Russia. On March 13, 1912, when the Italo-Turkish War was still going on, Bulgaria and Serbia signed a military treaty against Austria-Hungary and, more importantly, the Ottoman Empire. Serbia got Montenegro to join and Bulgaria got Greece to join. This alliance was known as the Balkan League. The Ottomans' railroads were poor, so the best way for them to get their troops to Europe was the Aegean Sea. I'm really sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. Greece was the only Balkan nation with a strong navy, making them completely necessary to the plan. Greece kept postponing the war throughout 1912 to better prepare their navy. Throughout this time, Bulgaria and Serbia signed multiple treaties, basically saying that Bulgaria got most of Macedonia after the war with the Ottomans, and Serbia would get most of Albania. Eventually, Montenegro decided to take matters into their own hands. They declared war on the Ottoman Empire on October 8th, and after a referendum was sent to Porte on October 13th by the other members of the Balkan League, the full Balkan League declared war on the Ottoman Empire on October 17th. With the Greek navy blocking off the Turkish troops, the Balkan powers won major victories. Bulgaria sent their army off to Macedonia and Thrace, and they seized the very important city of Adrianople. The reason they were met with little resistance was because of the Ottomans believing that most of Bulgaria would be fighting in Macedonia, so that's where they sent most of their troops. Bulgaria had about 600,000 troops to fight against the outnumbered Ottomans. Serbia also had quick, fast victories, making its way down to some parts of Albania. Montenegro pushed east, and Greece managed to push north. Albanian rebels, realizing their opportunity, declared independence from the Ottomans. Peace talks began in London, but due to some Turks fearing that Adrianople would go to Bulgaria, they forced the Ottoman government to continue. After Bulgaria took Adrianople, and after it tried to invade Constantinople, the Ottoman agreed to surrender on May 30, 1913. In London, the Balkan League gained lots of new lands, but most importantly, Albania was given its independence by the great powers instead of what Serbia had hoped, which was to occupy almost all of it. To make up for this lost territory, Serbia would break the previous treaties with Bulgaria, meaning Serbia tried to occupy more of Macedonia than what was agreed upon. Yikes. However, the entire situation was worked out diplomatically, leaving all sides happy. The end. Ha! <laughs> Did you really think that would happen? This is the Balkans! Bulgaria prepared to invade Serbia. Serbia realized what was happening, so they made a defensive alliance with Greece. Also, Romania had taken a city from Bulgaria with the approval of the Great Powers. So, on June 16, 1913, Bulgaria invaded Serbia and Greece, hoping to knock them out quickly before the Great Powers got involved. However, after some Bulgarian losses, Serbia and Greece were able to hold their line. Romania, realizing what was happening, invaded Bulgaria in the north, pushing south. Bulgaria, not expecting the Romanians to invade, had little troops stationed there, and Bul Romania swept through. The Ottoman Empire saw what was happening and decided to invade Bulgaria so that way they could gain some of their lost provinces back. Bulgaria, being pushed back on all sides, surrendered on July 18, 1913, just a little more than a month after the war started. Bulgaria was forced to give up land and learn to become peaceful with their Balkan neighbors at the Treaty of Bucharest. This treaty prevented any wars in the Balkans up to this day. <laughs> oh.
Oh, I got you, didn't I? This is the Balkans. Bulgaria joined World War I on the side of the Central Powers and invaded Serbia and Romania. Some countries just never learn, do they? In conclusion, the Balkans are a mess. Thank you for your time.